Moving on 100 years from the Peplos Corrie, we've got this statue known as Aphrodite of the Agora. Agora being the marketplace. And this one comes from the Athenian Agora. Uh, specifically found in the sanctuary of Ares with another Aphrodite statue, which is of course completely appropriate given that she is his girlfriend. Now, as you would expect from a statue of Aphrodite, she's very playful in her pose. Of course, we've got the contraposto and the trailing foot that we've seen with some of the male statues. But now she's got what's known as a hip thrust, where her hip juts out to the side in a very kind of playful and sensual way. Her drapery also links to her role as the goddess of love, sex and beauty uh, in the fact that the two different materials created by a thin and crinkly chiton and the heavier hymation play to reveal and conceal parts of her body. So as I mentioned, the chiton is the thinner material. It's actually the dress that she's wearing. And where it's thin, it draws attention to parts of her body that we can see. So for example, her stomach and her breasts. Whereas the hymation is doing the opposite. It's concealing the thigh area, the hip area. And it's this play of the two, the kind of catching glimpses and not being able to see parts of the, the body that makes the viewer feel a little bit voyeuristic, like they're trying to peep at Aphrodite and to be able to see her body. So the drapery is very much part of the role that Aphrodite plays as goddess of sex and beauty. The other ways in which this statue really plays with her divinity is in the proportions. So she's over life size, which like we've seen with other statues of gods and goddesses, is used to enhance divinity and show them as greater than mortals. Finally, it's worth me pointing out that whilst the date on our syllabus for this statue is 420 BC, it's a marble original statue from that time most people consider, there is a, a particular theory by a scholar called Stuart that says that this statue could be much later, so from an Hellenistic period, which is kind of the time after 323 BC, the death of Alexander the Great. Now, the reason that Stuart thinks this is because it's more typical in the Hellenistic period to have drapery that kind of plays and conceals and reveals other parts. In the period that we're looking at for 20 PC classical period, drapery is more modest and concealed than what we're seeing here. Uh, and also he says that pose with the hip thrust out to the side is more typical of later statues as well. So we'll go for 420 BC, but it's nice to be aware of those alternative arguments.